Hey everyone, today we are diving into something super cool, behavior trees. Ever wonder how game enemies make decisions? Well, I'm going to show you how I used behavior trees to create these ninja and guardian enemies in my 2D game. See this little ninja? He's not just running around randomly, he's actually making decisions using something called a behavior tree. Let's break down how it works. Think of a behavior tree like a flowchart of decisions. The enemy is constantly asking itself questions like, am I getting knocked back? Can I see the player? Should I patrol around? And based on these questions, it decides what to do next. Pretty neat, right? Also, the another interesting part is attack sequence. Which enemy is spawning from attack task? It's actually an animation sequence. And when animation is active, the real game object, little ninja, gets disabled for that duration and its step event is actually disabled. At the top, this is just a normal game maker code which I need for other tasks. It's also inheriting few basic things from obj enemy parent. Also sprites map is just my easy to local sprites data. We will be needing visible range and attack range for our patrol and attack sequences. And also I download behavior trees GML script from GitHub but as well added few customizations such as draw and draw GUI methods. All right, let's get going. Here's our little ninja's behavior tree. At the top, we have what's called a selector node, BT root. Think of it like a multiple choice question. It keeps trying different options until it finds one that works. Our ninja has three main branches, knockback, when hit, patrol, when idle, attack, when player is spotted. The cool part? This all happens automatically, making our ninja feel alive and reactive. When our ninja gets hit, bam, the knockback sequence kicks in. This is what we call a sequence node, which means all steps must happen in order. At the moment, knockback sequence has just knockback task, and hence, if it succeeds, it will exit and go to next sequence. Otherwise, it would have gone to next task in knockback sequence. Failure means exit the current active sequence completely and go to next one. Let's understand our three possible states. Success. I completed my job. Failure. I can't do this right now. Running. I'm still working on it. Here's a cool trick I used. In Game Maker, I used variable instance exists to dynamically create variables on our enemies. It's like giving them memory on the fly. Otherwise, if I don't do this, I would have to create this apply knockback method in each game object wherever I would use this knockback task, as apply knockback method is called from our player's hitboxes. Similar stuff I have done at attack task to save myself from creating all this duplicated code in each enemy object. And you can see knockback task is used at guardian enemy as well, which saves me from adding duplicated code. At player hitbox, when it calls apply your knockback function, it's basically setting knockback is active to true. And that's how our knockback gets applied, else it will exist, the knockback sequence. And go to patrol sequence, where patrol sequence would choose its first child, which is idle task. The patrol sequence is pretty smart. If player is detected, it will return failure and go to attack sequence. Then it idles for a bit. Remember, we have our alarm. When success is returned from idle, it will go to patrol task within our patrol sequence. Otherwise, it keeps running the idle task. At patrol task, if it detects player, it will exit with a failure and go to attack sequence. The best part, all this complex behavior is organized neatly in our tree. You can notice that we are reusing some tasks at guardian enemy as well in our little ninja enemy. The selector works like a smart bouncer at a club. It has a list of options and tries each one until something works. Can I attack? 
No. Next option. Can I chase the player? No. Next option. And so on. Think of it like this. If the guardian can't attack because you're too far away, it doesn't just give up. It tries to chase you instead. That's what makes the guardian feel more persistent and threatening than the ninja. And there you have it. Behavior trees might sound complex, but they're really just a super organized way to make our enemies smarter. They're like tiny brains that make our game world feel more alive. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more game dev stuff like this.